In today's video, we're gonna look at Google AI Studio, and I'm gonna show you why this is a very underrated tool, particularly now that they released this thing called grounding. And grounding just allows you to make sure that the Gemini API, whether you're using Gemini 1.5 Pro or the Flash model, is grounded on real-time information making this very, very interesting for SEO and content copywriting because you can get up to date information. This was released only a couple of days ago, but you can use it in the Google AI Studio. If you haven't used it, I'll leave a link to it below and it's relatively easy to use. It's much like OpenAI's Playground and Anthropic's dashboard as well. So let's get to it right away and, and let's, let me show you the difference between the new grounding capability that it has and how this can really impact our writing. For example, I'm gonna leave the system instructions as it is, but I'm, I started a new prompt, which is a way to start kind of a new conversation with all the models that you can test out here. And by the way, if you haven't tried Google AI Studio, you should, it's great. And with inside, inside Google AI Studio, you can actually use most of the models for free, which makes it really enticing. You can also add files from your Google Drive, upload uh, any files, recording audio, take a photo, and even videos and stuff like that, and get it to generate content from that. We'll get to that later, or maybe that's for another video, but what I wanna do now is show you here the differences between the grounding models. I'm gonna to go to compare, and this brings up a nice little user interface for me to compare the models. I'm going to run in the settings options here, and I'm gonna click grounding for the left-hand Gemini 1.5 conversation here, and I'm just gonna use this at eight, and then the other one, I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't have the grounding model and it doesn't here, um, but just for similarities perspective, the grounding is off, but the the tokens are still the same. So we're so this is a very even fight. And we're gonna ask you very, something very recent, like what is the latest development of OpenAI? And we're gonna hit enter. And you can see right away that we've got here with the, with the conversation on the left, it's saying prompt caching, which is something that happened fairly recently, vision fine tuning, which happened only a couple of weeks ago, or a month ago, and a bunch of other things, uh, as well as the coming release of Orion, which is supposed to be a hundred times more perfect than GPT-4, which is fine. That's kind of late news from October. It's great. But then the other version, which isn't grounded, is still talking about GBT 3.5 and as of October 26, 2023. So very much late and old data that we wouldn't want to use. This makes this really interesting. Let's, let me show you an incredible way that you can use this for your content writing or for your ideas. And instead of having to go to Google to find all the frequently asked questions, for example, I generated a humongous dirty prompt that you can have, I'll, I'll leave it linked in the detailed video in the detailed video descriptions below. And we're gonna put it in the system prompts. System prompts, uh, system instructions are like system prompts in custom GPTs. It's the foundation, it forms how you want the language model to act, whether that's from a personality and the output and everything here. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got the grounding enabled here and I'm gonna change this to 0.8 again. And perfect, the temperature will leave at one. And I'm just going to give it a frequently asked question. For example, can I do SEO with AI? And it understands what I want it to do. The prompt is really just telling it, take this question, do some research, and give me back some detailed analysis and some more related questions from this topic. This helps you then really create a detailed strategy right away from what you should start writing about, what your audiences are asking about this tool, because it's grounded on real-time information. Not only that, I've actually got it to give you real examples of what's ranking really well and a little analysis of why they might be ranking really well. Now, you need to keep in mind, it doesn't have access to things like keyword search volume and keyword difficulty, predominantly because those are data that is generated by Ahrefs with their own set of parameters. This isn't something generated by Google. So now this is finished and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to something like a HTML code preview. And now I've got here keyword analysis report. Can I do SEO with AI? And I've got the main keyword and questions, the sub questions as well, and sub questions for those sub questions, the top ranking analysis as well. And it gives you the top organic result, the URL, why it's ranking well as well. This is an on-site analysis. It's not an off-site analysis. So you need to take it with a grain of salt, but it's a great way to start. And I just want to verify that these ones are real. So I'm going to go to 
you also want to verify that the links are correct. Sometimes Google, just sometimes Gemini and all these language models, they don't like saying no and they make things up, which is hallucinating and why we want to use this grounding thing. But if you check the first link out, we can see that it's taking us to a real blog, which is great. So for the most part, it's founded on good real information. And we've got a little bit more telling us why it's ranking and then it gives you a little bit of a comprehensive strategy, like what should you do after? You've got all this information, great. <laughs> but it tells us to um, focus on case studies, real world examples of AI SEO success. That's a great way to, to write as well. Unique angles, explore the future, optimization tips and things like that. But the main data is the keywords and the questions that it gave us here. Really good. If you're using this, by the way, and at the end you get a bunch at the end, you get a bunch of HTML that you don't know what to do with. You can use HTML code editor to try it out. Or what you do is you simply use like a VS code editor and you save that file as a HTML. And then we can open it in our with our browser. And when you open it with your browser, that file, it needs to be a modern browser like uh, Chrome or Brave, but you're probably watching it on a modern browser. You'll get this, which is the output. And now you can kind of do whatever you want with this. You can copy it. You can... I don't know, use it as an example for a strategy, but already it kind of helps you, saves you time back. And I think that's the real thing with all these AI tools. Really interesting way to get ideas and it's relatively very cost-effective. I think, I think, in fact, I need to verify this, but I'm pretty sure they give you a free usage when you're using this stuff on the Google AI Studio. So you want to use the latest models with access to the internet? Well, Google AI Studio is there for you. Don't get me wrong, you can probably do this with GPT search as well, but the token count and output of something like Gemini uh, 1.5 Pro doesn't compare to ChatGPT. Really cool tool, underrated, you should check it out. And if you want to learn more about how to use these AI tools to maximize your SEO and general marketing with AI tools and automations, which really make your life a lot easier. I run a school community called the AI Ranking School Community. There's a premium version and a free version. The free version is there to kind of get you started. If this is new for you, but this is something that you want to learn, you can get started with the free community. And if you want some more support, you can head over to our premium community as well. I'll leave links to both of these below. It's a lot of fun. We're getting a lot of great success and a lot of great outcomes for our students there. So if you want that, you can check it out in the video description below. Apart from, thanks for watching. I hope you try this out. If you really like this, let me know by subscribing and liking the video. And if you want to see anything else like this, just leave it in the comments below. Cheers. Thanks for watching.